Hey there, I'm Dan, the self-proclaimed Lonely Rocker. Welcome to the first installment of the Lonely Rockers. QCC. That's questions, comments, concerns, as far as you're concerned. I think in the future, I'd like to see this as a live stream. I'm not sure if my channel's quite there yet where we're gonna get a big enough audience, but I am working on it. So I thought I would start and dip into the archives of questions that have been piling up on my channel. I do pretty much keep up with uh, everything that comes in. It's starting to get to the point where it's becoming a little bit difficult. So I thought this would be a good place to, uh, to gather some new questions and hear what's going on with you guys to get some feedback and some of the things I'm, I'm, that I'm doing and perhaps we'll get some ideas uh, for future videos coming up. So uh, I'd like this to be an interactive segment, uh, best we can, we'll see if we can get there. Uh, a couple of promises off the top. Uh, number one, uh, there's not gonna be any fart buttons in this segment. Uh, I think someone else has got that covered off and uh, I can't promise what's uh, gonna happen by accident, but uh, no intentional fart buttons in this uh, segment. Uh, number two, uh, for those of you asking questions, I'm not gonna make it sound like you just sucked a big balloon of helium. Uh, I think somebody else has got a pet on that and I'm uh, not looking to get sued so we're gonna leave that one right there and uh, the third promise is uh, we're gonna limit this to probably one or two cameras I'm not actually that interesting to look at so we're gonna keep it pretty simple and uh, we won't have uh, multiple uh, 360 coverage on uh, this mug of mine we don't need that and beyond that uh, I'm not really gonna make any promises anyways if you're new to the channel uh, th I thought this would be a fun way to take a look at some of the videos that you might have missed as the questions that I'm gonna go through now have come from various videos on my channel and uh, I'm gonna put links to anything of interest uh, in the comment section or in the description I should say so uh, don't hesitate to check that out anyways uh, let's uh, dive into the questions the first question comes from Martin Vaz and relates to a video I did on a sur guitar that I picked up a few months ago that commemorated uh, a milestone birthday Um, I'm typically known as a Gibson guy, and uh, when it uh, came to celebrate my 50th birthday, yes, I know you're shocked, uh, I thought for sure I was going to buy another Gibson, and uh, the reason I went to Sir, um, well, you're going to have to watch that video to find out, but uh, I got out of my comfort zone and discovered a really cool instrument. Uh, so I've got a comment here. Uh, this is by far one of the best videos I've seen here. Very honest and entertaining. Guitar-wise, the Sir Telly is just awesome. I have that very same guitar. I love that Telly so much that I also purchased the Bengal Burst. You made a great choice. Um, well, thanks so much uh, for your thoughts, and it is absolutely a glorious instrument. It's uh, sitting here uh, behind me. And now, the whole purpose of that video, other than to tell a story, it was probably the, one of the most personal stories that I've told on my channel so far, but really the idea behind it was to get out of your comfort zone. Like I said, I was thinking that I was going to buy something, maybe another Gibson to go along with my collection, and uh, for reasons mentioned in that video, decided to give some other brands a try. And uh, I'm really glad that I did because it it got me uh, to really look at myself as a guitar player and realize that as I get older, my, my needs are changing, my hands are changing. And perhaps trying different instruments uh, would certainly open up new possibilities for me as a player. And I discovered, uh, you know, an X shape and an X size that I hadn't considered before. And it's really made a big difference and made me feel a little more comfortable. And uh, I was really excited uh, to discover that. So really that video was just about getting out of your comfort zone and uh, discovering that there might be something else uh, good for you out there there and uh, you're gonna miss it if you don't uh, look for it so uh, thanks again for your comment the next question is uh, I did a, a Q&A on acoustic panels a while back I've done a, a number of videos here about how to make acoustic panels how to mount acoustic panels and how to how to place them and things like that Jen X uh, wrote if I mount acoustic panels on my walls I won't have any room on them for my guitars first world problems I suppose you rock lonely rocker well, sometimes uh, form over function is uh, certainly important, and if it looks cool, then I bet it's going to sound cool too. You know, you can make these work. Um, they do work, but again, professionals are professionals for a reason, and uh, I do believe that. Because uh, there is this guy, I think he's got a, an acoustic panels company, and he started to weave his way into some of these videos and challenging some of these concepts. Buddy, I'm not trying to get in your way, but I never would have been a customer anyways. These are $20 panels. I built them myself, and they do a great job. So 
that's all these are for, so let's leave it there. You must be talking about the guy from Acoustic Fields. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Uh, now, first of all, uh, I don't want to insult him because I don't know him personally, and the truth is I've checked out his channel, and the guy knows what he's talking about, without a doubt. Uh, but when it comes to DIY acoustic panels, there's three key letters in that concept, and that's D-I-Y. Do it yourself. You've got a home studio, you've got a limited budget, there are things that we can do to give us that experience or to improve the experience in, in recording and mixing music, and creating your own panels is a very doable thing. Uh, it doesn't even require a lot of carpentry skills. Uh, so, um, Anyways, I've done a, a number of videos and I noticed that uh, he had dropped into the comments a few times and yes, uh, I did make reference to him, uh, but certainly, like I said, he knows what he's talking about, but when it comes to doing it yourself, uh, DIY acoustic panels make a really big difference on a limited budget. Uh, I'm not suggesting it's the best thing you can do if you've got a budget to hire a company to take readings around your room and, and design a, an acoustic treatment for that space. Uh, if you've got the budget, definitely go for it. But for the rest of us who are just looking to make our spaces sound a little bit better on a budget, uh, I highly recommend uh, one of my DIY acoustic panel videos, uh, it will make a big difference. All right, so I got a couple questions uh, on a video I did about the uh, Two Notes Torpedo Captor 8. For those of you not familiar, it's a DI load box that allows you to record uh, a tube amp in, in virtual silence. You can work on headphones because you get a line out from your tube amp, and then you can use speaker IRs uh, to do your cab simulation. So uh, I'll just get to the, the first comment. Uh, interesting choice, Captor versus HX Stomp. Never really thought about that. One tip, if you allow me to give you, the next great choice is to buy a Cab M. Then you don't really need the wall of sound because you have everything you need in the Cab M and go directly into the DAW. By the way, the Captor X may be a great choice also. So basically what he's talking about is, uh, so the, the Captor 8 uh, basically takes your tube amp, like I said, and, and sends it to your DAW on a line level. And then the wall of sound is a plug-in that, that ships with that device that allows you to simulate uh, your cabinets in your DAW. Now, I like doing that because I do a lot of demonstrations here, so the ability to change my cabinets later is really cool. It's really flexible. Uh, the Cab M is a stomp box shaped device that houses all of the uh, the cab simulation, so you can take come out of the captor, a torpedo captor, into the Cab M to get your um, your speaker simulations and do it all in one shot. And most recently is the Captor X, which is Two Notes' latest uh, compact DI load box with built-in cab uh, simulation, which is a really great device to have an all-in-one. Um, but the video uh, really talked about, it, it referenced the HX Stomp, and really the difference, and the reason I chose to go with a more DI load box solution is because I wanted to record uh, my tube amp. Uh, with a, a modeler, like the HX Stomp is sort of the Helix Lite, uh, Line 6 is a light version of their Helix platform, where you've got just a myriad of amp options and, and different simulations, you know, microphones and cabinets in, in that device. Uh, but that's not something I decided was what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I want to be me, I want to, shape my sound with my amp and my pedals and uh, that's exactly what I can do and then I can take a line level uh, through the Captor 8 into my DAW and then uh, use the speaker simulation in the software and I can do it all quietly in my headphones so I can record at night and not uh, drive my family crazy and ultimately uh, that's why I decided to go that route. Uh, Jeff Bell said, uh, I had done some song demos uh, using the Behringer GDI which turned out well however I've been using a torpedo captor for a few months and think it's great. I had considered the Helix Stomp, but believe that I, I have plenty of options already using my existing amps. And exactly what I said, that's my point. And really the difference is if, you, if you're looking to, to buy either a modeling system or something like the, the Capture 8, uh, like a load box DI situation, um, it really comes down to what you want to do. If you want to have a ton of options, like if you're writing and composing and recording for a bunch of different people and you just need a lot of flexibility, then a modeling system will probably be for you because it just gives you a lot of different options if you don't have the budget to go out and buy 10, 20 different uh, tube amps. Uh, whereas if you're looking to craft your own sound and you want to record your own amp, that's where something like the Capture 8 comes in handy because you can shape your own sound and um, you know use the advantages of, of technology to record quietly. Um, by the way, it's also an attenuator too, so you can run it in between your head and your cab uh, to uh, to lower the, the volume, but you can still drive the amp hard and ultimately the, the, the volume that everyone hears is quieter. So it's a good way to get good saturation out of the head. Uh, without being too loud. So really that's the difference. If you're struggling to make the decision, just decide what it is you want to do, and I think you'll be able to make the decision from there. How are we doing back there? Uh, by the way, if you want better seats, you got to get here earlier, right? Yeah, nice. Slippers. Bye. All right, so let's go on to the next series of questions. Um, I did a series of videos where uh, I dug into my storage and pulled out some gear that I hadn't used in a long time and thought I would uh, 
review it all over again and see if it's something that I'd consider buying it if I had that option and choice today. Uh, so one of the ones I did was, was the Proco Rat Distortion Pedal. And uh, I thought that was kind of fun because I think it's one of the most polarizing distortion pedals uh, ever made. Uh, it's quite popular, but people love it as much as people hate it. So, uh, but I thought it'd be fun to dive into it. So let's uh, look at the comments. Jim Gillis said, you're not using it right, especially not pushing real speakers. Uh, what he's referring to is I actually, as I mentioned, I use my Captor 8, so I bypass the, the cabinets because uh, I just went through my head. I went the rat into the head and then straight into uh, my DAW through the Captor 8. Um, he said, I'm not using it right. That's why it didn't sound good. Now, uh, in his defense, he did send me a clip of him, uh, a recording that he did with the rat. And I have to say it sounded pretty awesome. So in his setup, he kind of found a sound and I really, really liked it. Uh, in my setup, whether I was recording it that way or was just going straight to, into my amp with speakers, uh, I never really loved it. I'm sorry. I just didn't. And it didn't work for me, but goes to show some love it and some don't. Fret Friend Guitar Workshop wrote, just sounds horrible to me. I never got on with distortion pedals though. There's a lot of great distortion pedals out there and uh, uh, if you didn't find a great sound in the Rat, uh, unfortunately that's probably not the best place to start because it is a very particular sound and as I've said, uh, pretty harsh. But uh, again, example, some people are pretty passionate about it and uh, some people just don't like how it sounds and I'm not the only one. So I'm not saying I hate it. I think I'll find use for it uh, in certain applications. Uh, we'll see, I, I'm, I'm certain I'll, I'll pull it out again. All right, the next question comes from a video that I did on four different ways to record electric guitar in a home studio. Basically, I recorded the same guitar part four times and I presented it blindly and had everyone try and figure it out and I actually sent them off to another video for the big reveal. And I'll get to the comment. Uh, Jop Flop wrote, had them all wrong. Goes to show that there aren't any bad products out there anymore. Just choose which one you like. I like the HX, by the way. Thanks for writing. And actually, that was my point is, uh, in this day and age, there are a lot of different options. If you're just setting up your studio for the first time and you want to record guitars and you're on a limited budget, you know, don't worry if you can't afford a, a good tube amp if you don't already have one. Um, in the video, I covered off uh, a tube amp, uh, recording it, you know, through a cab and microphone, uh, the Captor 8, which I mentioned, where I could bypass the cabs. Uh, I used the HX Stomp and I used some plugins where I just went direct into the DAW and then I used plugins to get, uh, to get the, the gain overdrive distortion sounds. And, um, Really, you know, when you when you watch it in that context, it's interesting because um, they all sounded good in their own way. Uh, if, if your ear is really tuned for that and you know what you want, um, well, you know, you, you know what you want. But if you're just getting started, I don't think you need to be, get hung up on, you know, because you can't afford a, a really good three, four thousand uh, dollar tube amp. Uh, there's options out there. Some plugins net right now are, are sounding really, really good. Some as cheap as 10 bucks up to maybe 100, 200 bucks. You're going to find a plugin that's going to give you some really great tones. And if you're looking to practice practice your mixing and you just need to get some tracks in there, I absolutely uh, recommend that you find a good plugin or two. Uh, it'll allow you to record guitars very inexpensively, but you're going to get some really good results. And ultimately, if you're mixing especially, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. I mean, if you're a guitar player that's really particular about your tones and you, you want to shape it through a tube app, well, that's what they're there for. But honestly, don't get hung up on, on how you do it, because if you're on a budget, there's a lot of great options out there and you're still going to be able to create some great music. Pod 2.0 Tones wrote, you're so underrated, that intro is awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, maybe that was just a little bit of uh, self-promotion there. I don't know. Um, I do like to write uh, different pieces of music. I mean, this is a music channel. I don't push my own music. That's not the purpose of my channel, but I do create music, which is why I have a home studio, but I like to embed uh, music either as background music or my theme songs and things like that. So, uh, and as I am a professional uh, video producer, I combine sort of my music skills with video production to create the experience that I bring to you. So it's always nice uh, when somebody notices and uh, if you haven't seen some of those, I do encourage you to check them out. And the last question in our first installment of UCC, uh, questions, comments, concerns. Javier David Coparelli, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, uh, really useful as your other videos about acoustic treatment. I'm about to put some acoustic treatment in my home studio, so I'm going to use your videos as a guide. Well, Javier, thank you so much. Uh, that's why I'm here. Um, I have a lot of fun with this stuff and I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. And that was sort of uh, when I started my channel, the very first official video was my cheap and awesome acoustic panels. And I can't believe how well that video is done. I'm just like over a quarter million views as of today. And uh, it keeps growing. And uh, 
I, I did a lot of research and then I made some mistakes and then I figured out a formula that I just wanted to share and that was sort of the uh, the birth of this channel and, and that's why I'm here. I'm not sitting in here in some multi-million dollar studio preaching on how to make music and make things better. I'm just like you. I'm sitting here in a basement uh, slowly building up the space and, and making it better for uh, for making music really for fun. I'm not trying to be a big time Grammy Award producer here. So, But I'm sharing experiences and as I said, I do have a, a, a broadcast video production background so I'm trying to create an experience but uh, I like teaching and I like sharing ideas and uh, I like collaborating which is why I started this series so uh, that's why I'm here and uh, thanks so much for uh, for your comment anyways that brings us to the end of this first installment of the QCC I hope you found that interesting like I said I hope uh, you know we can grow the segment a bit and perhaps turn it into a live stream one day if you're interested in seeing that just uh, let me know in the comments and if you have any other questions uh, please drop them down there and I will read through all the comments uh, if you're new to the channel I've got a lot of videos on this channel revolving around this home studio um, for the home musician producing music guitar players I've got gear reviews I've got stories I'm meeting a lot of people in the music industry and I'm bringing them to this channel so I hope you hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride uh, if you really want to support this channel I am on patreon links to everything I talk about are in the description below and above all else I'll hope to see you again in another video